My upbringing in Glorivale was, if you compare it to what a normal child in New Zealand society would typically experience, it was very different. I grew up in very strict, conservative Christianity and fundamentalism. My entire world was kind of compacted into this one geographical location in the Hopiti Valley and that is the place that I expected that I would grow up, have children, grow old and die. My name is Lilia Tarawa and I'm a speaker and writer on how to love yourself and build healthy self-esteem and I grew up in the Glorivale Christian community. You were born here? Yep. You were all born here? Yes. So this is pretty much life as you know it. Yep. I found it really difficult to explain to people why I decided to leave Glorivale because there are so many reasons why I decided to leave. The Christian society I grew up in has a very traditional way of disciplining children and they adhere to the scripture in the Bible that says spare the rod, spoil the child. So I grew up watching people give their children hidings with leather belts, alkaline pipes. If I was to say something, if I saw a child being treated wrongly, then I would be put down for it or degraded, humiliated or punished in the same way. One of the main reasons that I decided to leave Glorivale was because my parents had decided that they were going to leave. Glorivale teach that if someone leaves this church or they leave Glorivale, then that person is no longer welcome back. So they shun those people, ostracize those people and tell them you're never to return. So it was a Sunday afternoon and my dad went to the leaders, to their leaders meeting to ask for their blessing for our family to separate from Glorivale and live in the outside world. Yeah, no chance of that happening. My dad was at this meeting and it was getting really late and the meetings were taking, it was taking much longer than what it should. I walked out of the hostel to find my dad because I thought maybe he'd finished and just gone somewhere else. And I saw him walking a lot across the gravel on the parking lot towards me and he was slumped over with a handkerchief in tears and I've never seen my father cry in my whole life up until this point. So I run to him and I say, Dad, what's wrong? And he said, you get those kids and you put them in the van right now. And he'd parked a van out the back of Glorivale so I run back to our family room where the kids are playing on the floor and I say, gather your things, we're leaving. And they grab all their toys and they pick them up and they, they rush them out to the car and strap them into their seats. And then I say to my father, I just have one more thing I need to do. And I run back and my cousin's room was located just beside my family's room. And I went in there and all my cousins were there that I'd grown up with. Mary, Bethany, Joanna, Serena, Rachel, Sarah, all the girls that were like almost like sisters to me growing up and Serena's engaged to be married and she's one of my best friends she's been my team leader um, for a lot of my life in Glorivale and I just had this sinking feeling in my stomach that I'm going to miss her wedding and never see her again and I just stood in this room of people that I love with all of my heart and I know I'll never see them again and she asked me if something was wrong and I said no no I'll just I'll see you tonight and I just remember taking her in my arms I hugged her and I said I love I love you and then I walked out of that hostel that I'd lived in for years out the back to the van where the kids were in the car and I got in the car and my father drove us down the drive and I looked out the window and I knew I was saying goodbye. It took like a lot of time and self-reflection and learning about myself 
for me to come to the realization that it doesn't matter where I've come from it doesn't matter what my background is or what my sexuality is or what my religious beliefs are those things are inconsequential all that really matters is who I am as a person. I grew up in a world that told me, Lilia, it's not okay for you to have leadership skills. Lilia, you have to marry a man that we have arranged for you to marry. Lilia, you have to wear a headscarf every single day and to show your submission to men and to God. You have to wear a full length dress to cover your body from us because you look too pretty. And now I've kind of grown up and gone, F that. I want to be who I am. I want to feel confident and powerful within myself. The main thing which I am passionate about doing is giving myself a life that I really love and that I really enjoy, a life that I choose for myself. Being able to learn who I am and express that into the world has given me happiness. I've discovered that I'm a writer and I thought in school when I was doing English class that I was terrible at writing. I want to travel the world and I want to speak at big conferences and I want to make an impact and a difference in how people see themselves and what, how they believe in themselves because I know what it's like to struggle with low self-esteem. I love to speak, like I love to tell stories and express who I am. It's important for me to share my story because I know that it can change lives. I would tell my younger self that it's going to be okay that everything she goes to through, there's a plan and there's a purpose and it's going to work out okay in the end. And I would tell her that no matter what, always believe in yourself and trust your intuition and trust your ability to make good decisions and don't let what other people say about you matter too much because the most important thing is what you believe about yourself.